Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode I'm going to be taking you guys back to the year in 2017 to have a look at the Monsterverse movie Kong Skull Island. So you know the drill guys, I'm going to have a look at the trailer. But before that let's jump on the Huey helicopter, let's get my M16 assault rifle, put my shades on and let's go and see what's happening on Skull Island. So I'll see you guys soon. Uncharted Island. Let me list all the ways you're going to die. Rain, heat, disease-carrying flies, and we haven't started on the things that want to eat your life. We'll double that. Plus a bonus if we make it back. If? In this dirty old part of the city Where the sun refuses to shine Is that a monkey? live below us i call them skull crawlers why because it sounds neat okay look i just made that name up i'm trying to scare you i'm fine calling them that are you cool with that yeah that, that seems like i like the name like a... Run! And welcome back guys. So the synopsis for this film is after the Vietnam War, a team of scientists explores an uncharted island in the Pacific, venturing into the domain of the mighty Kong and must fight to escape a primal Eden. It's got a two hour running time, it's a PG-13 and it's classed as a action adventure fantasy movie. And it's also got 6.6 .6 on IMBD. It's starring Tom Hiddleston as you could say the lead protagonist in this film, James Conrad. See him more recently in the Marvel films playing Thor's brother Loki. And talking about Marvel, you've got also got Samuel Jackson in this film and he plays, I suppose you could say the bad guy in this, uh, Lieutenant Packard. You've also got Brie Larson, again another Marvel um, character. She's recently played Captain Marvel. And she plays the photographer in this movie. Mason Weaver, you've got John Goodman as Bill Rander, Corey Hawkins as Houston Brooks, and Richard Jenkins as Willis. And Rick, Richard Jenkins was in a film uh, I watched a couple of years back called Bone Tomahawk with um, Kurt Russell. Pretty good film, pretty good uh, horror cowboy movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. So that's some of the cast, just to name a few people there. Uh, it was directed by Jordan Voigt Roberts and... Surprisingly enough, and this has kind of got a tie with um, the film before this, um, Gareth Edwards uh, directed the Godzilla film back in 2014 and this sets up the monster verse for this movie and the upcoming movie uh, Kong vs uh, Godzilla. But the thing that I noticed here was Gareth Edwards and this director, they hadn't really done many movies before this, they're both independent film makers, they made film shorts. 
But then all of a sudden the studio is just giving them $200 million to go and make a monster movie. So there just seems to be a bit of a connection there. So if you're an independent film director out there, and I do know a couple of independent film directors, and I know how difficult it is to try and get money to make a movie, go and make a monster movie. Because the studios will give you $200 million to go and make one. So I'm just saying. But putting that aside, having said that, it's good that some these independent film directors are having a shot at the title and they pretty much are having a heavyweight shot at the title with these monster movies. So it's, it's good to see that. But um, given the fact that they were given $200 million, they did make a return of nearly $600 million. So these films are doing well. They've done very well. People like to watch a monster movie. And I, I, I love monster movies. And whilst I'm talking about that, um, you know, King Kong was the first heavy hitter to hit the uh, cinemas back in 1933 with the classic black and white uh, King Kong movie, which is still incredible today. And then you had the Jeff Bridges 1976 movie, and then the more recent Peter Jackson movie in 2005. So these King Kong movies tend to do well at the cinema, they tend to um, be very popular with people. And before I go into the main review of the film, let's have a talk about some of the trivia and stuff like that. So it was filmed on location in Hawaii and Vietnam. Some really beautiful scenes in this movie. And um, the director said that he wanted to avoid the green, green screen as much as he could and wanted to film on location. And I think that really works well for this movie. And whilst I'm mentioning Hawaii, that's where Jurassic Park was filmed, so it's on the same location. And talking of Jurassic Park, uh, Samuel Jackson starred in that movie, and in both films he said, hold on to your butt, so he said the same line as a bit of a homage. Uh, this movie is the tallest Kong in an American movie, is 100 foot tall, and he is still a baby Kong in this movie, he is still a young Kong, so... And just going back to him being 100 foot tall, the director said that he wanted him to be that tall, to be like a sort of godlike character to tower above everybody in this film, so which works pretty well. And there's also three hours of footage uh, on this film. It was originally going to be a three hour movie, um, but they cut it down to two. I suppose it's just for a bit of quicker editing, so um, maybe look out for a director's cut in the future. If it's not out already, I don't know if it it might already be out and I've missed it but um, that'd be interesting to see because there's apparently there's a scene where James Conrad the Tom Hiddleston character fights a snake which is probably like a homage to 1976 um, Kong but that'd be pretty good to see so wait and see what happens with that I guess so let's have a talk about this film then guys um, so first of all to mention the thing I really like about this film and when I saw it in the trailers is I love the Vietnam tie-in with this movie and the fact that it's set in 1973 I love anything vintage like that and I think it tends to work um, I love like the old Huey helicopters and like I say the real set locations and as many people have said before it's basically um, Apocalypse Now meets King Kong and I really like that tone of the movie and it kind of reminds me of the films I grew up with like the the land that time forgot and in a funny sort of way it kind of reminds me of the old Sinbad movies as well where you've got people going to an island and then they come across monsters and they get involved in fights and stuff like that so as a starter for 10 personally for me I was already sold with this film by the trailer and um, it couldn't really do any wrong for me to be honest with you I just sat back and went to the cinema and just enjoyed a really good monster mash movie as a as a homage to these old films so I, I would like to see more of these movies to be honest with you and just whilst we're on the homage to the old movies and i'd actually like to see a sin bad movie made like this i think we're due one i think it's been over long um i didn't actually feel like i was in a watching a film which was cgi infested which is quite unusual these days and I think there could be a good chance this film might age well because of that so we'll have to wait and see but let's have a look at the film then so it's 1944 and you've got two pilots that parachute onto an island in the South Pacific being Skull Island and they're having a fight with each other and this is like a, another homage to a film with Lee Marvin called Hell in the Pacific this is an old war movie and they get interrupted by an ape so right at the beginning of the movie you see Kong, they throw him straight in there. And then it fast forwards 29 years later and you meet the John Goodman character Bill Radder and he works for Monarch. 
and you find out that he is a survivor of a US naval vessel that was uh, attacked by a monster and was covered up by the government and for the rest of his life he's tried to find these monsters in the world and he's found out that there's a an island called Skull Island and he believes that this is where the uh, monsters reside but he's not letting this off so in order to do this he wants to get some funding to get a research vessel there and the way he sells it is that he tells the government that we should go there before the Russians get there so that's how he sells it, he gets some funding and then to go there he recruits a US Army unit uh, which is where you meet Samuel Jackson and Lieutenant Packard his unit have been stood down after the withdrawal of the Vietnam War um, so he is available and he is looking pretty pleased with himself for this assignment So, and also to mention here you get a really good uh, soundtrack I've got to mention that, there's a really good um, soundtrack to this movie uh, which is Credence Clearwater Revival uh, you've got to run into the jungle and bad moon rising so that works really well again it's got that sort of real sort of vietnam war movie tone to it and those are typical songs that you hear in films like platoon and um hamburger hill just to say just to mention just a couple so everything is set up apart from a tracker and this is where you introduce the james conrad which is the tom hiddleston character and he works for the british army or his ex-british army he's a ex-sas soldier and um, I like him in this I think he's good and what I like about this is he's not a typical muscle bound action hero don't get me wrong I like, don't mind that in a movie but he is just a more plausible SAS soldier for me is probably how they are in real life and he is a badass in this film and he kind of reminds me of one of my favourite video game characters uh, Nathan Drake in a funny sort of way where he's got the gun holster on and he pulls it off quite well and he's also got a little bit of a hint of James Bond there as well, where he's got that holster on. I've always, I personally thought that Tom Hiddleston could actually play quite a good James Bond. So um, this is his chance to do it, and he pulls it off quite well. He plays the action hero pretty good in this movie. And I'd say, as I said earlier, with the paying homage to like the land at time forgot, he is pretty much your, your Doug McClure character in this. And then you've got um, Brie Larson, she plays the photographer, so to go to the island they want to take some pictures, so she, she hitches a ride. And as the movie progresses she forms an alliance with Tom Hiddleston, and we'll get into that later on. So they go to the island then you've got a scene of the Huey helicopters flying over the island and they're dropping seismic charges because uh, the John Goodman character believes that the Skull Islands is hollow. And Whilst they're doing this, they upset King Kong and he turns up and he punches up all the helicopters and you've got a scene where they're all getting um, destroyed and helicopters are crashing, some people are surviving and as a result of this carnage you get people uh, split into two groups in this film so you've got Packard and Randa who join an alliance with um, some of his men and then you've got James Conrad and Brie Larson with some of the survivors um, who team up and they're trying to find a way off the island. But then you've got um, Packard who has got a beef with Kong now and he wants to kill him. So he's looking for a, one of his helicopter pilots that went down in the crash because he's got some weapons on board that will kill Kong. So you've got that side of the story. So you kind of got a game of two halves here. But along the way you get some other monsters that turn up, you get a pretty cool scene with a spider that turns up in some bamboo shoots, which is pretty cool. You've got a giant water buffalo and you've got some flying pterodactyl looking things. And then you've also got Kong who has a punch up with a squid or something like that in a, in a, in a lake or something. So you get introduced to some of the fantastic creatures on Skull Island. Um, and then you've got... Um, James Conrad, Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson, they come across John C. Riley, um, Marlow. And he's been living with some natives for the 29 years that he's been there. And he explains about Kong and he says that Kong is not the bad guy. Kong is the good guy and he's been protecting the world from what he calls the skull crawlers and he's made that name up himself. So he said that if you kill Kong, then these skull crawlers will take over the world effectively. So they've got to now try and get off the island without getting killed by these skull crawlers who make an appearance and then try and stop Packard from killing Kong. And then this is where the film turns into an apocalypse now situation 
as um, Marlow has a boat which is made out of um, salvage from parts of old World War II planes and he fires it up and one of the guys makes a good comment and he says man it's just floating tennis so <laughs> it's pretty cool there's a little bit of comedy in this movie so they go down the river and you get a scene where they get attacked by the pterodactyl type creatures and one of the crewmen gets killed and then they finally reach a graveyard destination this is where you find out that Kong's parents had been killed by the skull crawlers and this is where they meet up with uh, Lieutenant Packard as well and they find out that he wants to kill Kong and they try to explain to him that if you kill him then as I said earlier the skull crawlers will take over the world but he's not having any of it and then talking about skull crawlers they turn up and you get a really good action sequence here where the soldiers are fighting the skull crawlers they've got their guns out and they're trying to shoot them back and you've got a guy with a 50 cow and he gets shot up and then you've got Tom Hiddleston jumping through the air with a samurai sword very randomly I think someone drops some gas and he's got a gas mask on so that, that's pretty cool so after this punch up a few people get killed, a few of the soldiers get killed and then uh, Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson manage to get away and again you've still got the divide between them and Packard and they manage to convince some of the other soldiers that Packard has just turned crazy and they explain about Kong and that if he does kill him then it's going to be like the end of the world effectively. So they kind of join sides and then you've got um, Packard laying down some charges to kill Kong and this is kind of where you get into the final um, fight scene you could say because whilst Packard standing by the lake a massive skull crawler turns up and uh, crushes him so that's him he's taken out and then Kong turns up and then you've got the, a fight between the skull crawler and Kong and with the help of uh, Tom Hiddleston and the Brie Larson and the remaining soldiers they managed to help Kong defeat the skull crawler and Kong emerges victorious but that skull crawler just didn't seem to want to die throughout the film they tried to blow it up they tried to shoot it um, it just kept coming back so but as I said there's some pretty good um, pretty good effects there I think they're going to be effects that will stand the test of time so so the remaining survivors managed to get back to the Rendezvous point and Kong watches them sail away so that is pretty much the end of the movie but before it ends you've got a end credits scene which is the part that opens it up to the next film that's coming out um, which is King Kong vs Godzilla and this is where you see um, Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson they've been detained by Monarch and they the agents inform them that Kong is not the only monster in the world and this is where you see some archive footage of cave paintings depicting Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan and King Ghidorah I think that's how you pronounce that name and the final painting shows Godzilla and Ghidorah in a battle and then the screen cuts to black and then that's it that's the end of the film so that is it guys that's my bite size review of Kong Skull Island hope you enjoyed it um, if you've seen the film I hope you enjoyed it if you haven't go check it out but as I said earlier I think this film got some mixed reviews from people but um, it's a monster movie I mean just sit back get some popcorn out enjoy it and tick off like I did when I was a kid all the monsters that you see because in these in these films all you want to see is some monsters having a punch up and that and I'll be quite happy if the studios turned out 10 movies like this I'll, I'll be very happy going to the cinema watching this type of movie so Sinbad in particular if anybody's listening to this uh, director from a studio make a Sinbad movie I'm just saying there you go did I mention that <laughs> so there you go guys that's it um, so let me tell you what I'm doing next. I will be back soon with Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery's The Rock from I think it's 1996. So um, I posted that on the page the other day and got a little bit of buzz. So I'm going to have a look at that movie. And later on, I'm looking at doing Con Air as well. So I'm going to be doing a bit of a Nicolas Cage uh, double whammy, but that's going to obviously going to be a separate episode. So that's what I've got coming in the future. And further on from that, I'm also looking at doing a little film called Time Bandits as well, just to let you know. So there's a few future episodes which I've got um, in stock. So that's it, guys. A um, little bit of admin. Um, I'm a proud member of Legion Podcast. Um, so check out all the other shows on there. There'll be a, um, a, a little clip at the end of the show naming all the great shows on there. And... 
you can find my show on iTunes and Stitcher. So there you go, guys. Uh, like I say, hope you enjoyed it. Keep it bite size out there. Keep it fun. And I'll see you guys soon. this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell Ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero ghost show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.